question which I wanted to ask you is um, um, related to some points that you raised in your lecture when you mentioned several times different categories such as race, class, gender and sexuality. Um, as we are all aware, there is a new trend in theory, uh, methodologically speaking, and it's called intersectionality. So I was wondering, maybe you can share with us your thoughts about it. Are there some problems with intersectionality? Well, this will take a little time because I actually prepared it. <laughs> How did I know that this question would be answered? Asked. Um, Well, there is this wild, at least in English-speaking contexts, uh, kind of wild popularity of this term, which, which really does seem to solve a lot of problems. Because it, it all started, well, it started, it seems to have started in the 70s with dual systems analyses in which you had class and what we then called sex, but now called gender. Um, as two systems, patriarchy and capitalism, whatever, that, that somehow ran the world. And we wanted to know more about that. And then we immediately, in the United States, uh, if not already, added race, because what could be more important? And um, so we had race, class, and gender as a kind of mantra, the, the tr so-called triple oppression. And then other people would say, well, what about sexuality, quite rightly? And what about ethnicity? And it began to seem like an, a laundry list, what I would call a laundry list. Um, and so in, depending on how you trace it, at a certain point, someone said, aha, let's call it intersectionality, because that I think they thought it was kind of a new term, but I, my feeling is that it was a way to cover this laundry list and, and give due consideration to everything. And the term, I feel, has a positive aspect. It is an attractive solution to this problem. Uh, people like it. It seems to represent things as they are, and it seems to include everyone and everything. But ultimately, I think it's not useful. I think it's theoretically incoherent. Um, first of all, what does it mean? Uh, does it mean that we are all slotted into various social positions at the same time? I think what sociologists call roles. Um, and I think it, for a lot of people, that's what it means. For a lot of people, it's about identity. Not so much that we're in roles, but that we have different identities. Uh, or maybe it's both, in which case, how do they relate? Uh, there's no clarity. And so I, I think, in a way, people who, at the moment, people who are talking a lot about intersectionality don't know what they're talking about. There's apparently one textbook on intersectionality that talks only about identity. Seems not right. The history of the term goes back, as I already said, to, the, to the, that trilogy. And before that, in the 30s, in the United States at least, black communist women were writing essentially about race, class, and gender. I, don't, I, I haven't investigated it enough, but um, it was some version of the trilogy. So it's an old term. And ultimately, I think the term is descriptive. Or we might say, using the categories that I used before, empirical. It describes things, which is very helpful. But it doesn't explain things. Theory explains things. Theory is the level at which you can find explanation. So we don't know how these various uh, categories intersect, what makes them intersect. They're also ridiculously big. Race, what, what in the world are we talking about? Is race 
Is Palestinian race the same as black African race with 400 years of chattel slavery? You know, I think, I think in, for me, it's, it's, it's more confusing than helpful. Thank you very much. And now we can invite you maybe to ask some questions. Well, well I just wanted to ask you about the concept of patriarchy, because I noticed that you, you don't use it, but you prefer some uh, gender oppression, for example, mm -hmm. more than the term patriarchy. So I would like to know if there is uh, some reason for it. I mean, I believe there is some reason for it. <laughs> uh, because uh, the concept is very often used in feminist discussions, but uh, very often doesn't have any substance. It doesn't have any meaning uh, in the discussions. Uh, it is taken uh, for granted most often. Mm -hmm. So thank you, that, that would be my question. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, patriarchy is a term that suddenly appeared in the women's liberation literature simultaneously, I think, in either 1971 or 1973. And suddenly everybody was talking about patriarchy, not me. Uh, but um, I, I somehow haven't really heard the term in a long time. I'm, I move in small circles, perhaps. But it seems to me it's another one of these terms that seems to, ex to, to, be, to explain a lot, but nobody knows what it means. It covers too much. It helps you to say, to, to cross different types of societies class societies and non-class societies. It has historically been used to say that, um, oh, for example, patriarchy predates capitalism. Therefore, it can't have been created by capitalism. Therefore, Mark, it's hopeless to be a Marxist feminist or something like that. And it is true that something like women's oppression predates capitalism. But I think it's a, a trans-historical term that covers so much that it's useless. So I don't know if that's satisfactory.